Welcome to the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, where you get multifamily investing made real. Learn from top players in the real estate investment world as they share their secrets with you and discover proven strategies on apartment investing that actually work. To learn more about Wheelbarrow Profits, visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. Now to your hosts, Jake and Gino. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast. Mm-hmm. Here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father, six, the best-selling author, the G Daddy, Gino Barbo. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, I'm doing good today. <clears throat> excellent, excellent. We have a very special guest today. Today's mm-hmm. guest is T. Harv Ecker. Harv is the best-selling author of Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. He is also the founder of Peak Potential Training Programs, one of the most successful training companies in North America. Harvest touched the lives, lives of over 1.5 million people, helping them move closer to their goal of true financial freedom. So without further ado, Harv, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure to have you here. Tell us about your business background and how you got started. Um, well, let's see. I, I think that the pertinent part of this is that um, my parents came over from Europe. They were completely broke. They instilled a philosophy to me that said, um, if you are not rich, you die. (laughs) Not that you don't have the nicest clothes, you don't have the nicest car. It's you're rich and you live. If you're not rich, you die. And so all I wanted to be when I grew up was a millionaire. Um, My friends, you know, the kids wanted to be baseball players and hockey players and and presidents. and, And I just want to be a millionaire. I didn't even know what it was. So... Uh, I went to uh, first year of college. Um, wasn't I wasn't I wasn't rich yet, <laughs> and so I dropped out of college and uh, went for for high levels of success. And I uh, didn't realize it, but I would end up spending the next ten years completely broke. Um, I try. I was involved in uh, fourteen different jobs. I had 12 different businesses, nothing worked for me. And as you can probably imagine, and I know a lot of people that are listening right now uh, probably have the same experience when, when that kind of thing happens, you know, you, you, everything you start is like, oh my God, this is going to be fantastic. And you know, I, I, I can't wait. And this is going to make millions and it doesn't work. It blows up and it feels like a bubble bursting. And after time, after time, after time, pretty soon, you know, you start losing a bit of confidence. You start uh, questioning yourself. And in the end, um, I was very fortunate that um, I had to move back home with my parents, which wasn't a cool thing at the time, especially now it's kind of normal. (laughs) So I was living in a basement apartment. A friend of my father's came over to play cards with him from back in the old country. Very, 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 very wealthy man. Sees me in the hall, says, oh, I haven't seen you since you were young. Your father tells me that you are a bum. (laughs) <laughs> so I said, Hey, thanks for the compliment. I, and he says, um, he says, what's going on? What's, what's the matter with you? And I go, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I try my best. I work hard. I, I, I do what I think is the right thing to do. I start these different businesses. Nothing works. And he says, um, he says some words that changed my life. And he says, Harv, if, if you're not doing as well as you like to be doing, all that means there's something you don't know. And being a brash young man at the time, I thought I knew what? Everything. So I Mm -hmm. I finally listened because I was in enough pain. And uh, he says, what do you want to do? I said, I just want to be rich. He says, well, well, how? Like, I said, in business. And he says, so, you know, you have to understand that that rich people, and usually rich business people, they generally think and do the same things. And you're not doing that. And so I said, what is it? Well, how do they do it? He says, well, that's not for me to tell you. That's for you to find out. So I spent the next six months just literally studying rich business people. And since I wasn't working anyways, and wasn't making any money and living off my parents. And um, after those six months, I actually came up with seven very specific kind of principles or laws or ways or strategies, whatever you call it, that they all seem to have in common or most of them. And I went back to him and to show him, he kicked me out of his office. He says, don't show me, show the world. And, and he really just kicked me. I waited for four hours. He kicked me out. And so, um, I ended up uh, borrowing $2,000 on my visa card. I had no money whatsoever. And I ended up opening the world's first retail fitness store. So exercise equipment that you use in the home. 
There, were, there was nothing before that. They were all in department stores or something, warehouses. And uh, uh, using the principles that I learned, I became a millionaire in two and a half years. And so, you know, everything was going uh, tremendous at that point in time. Um, and people started asking me, you know, well, you know, I knew when you, you when you were broke, you know, when you had no money, you're always bumming five bucks off of people. What happened? And so I started telling them, you know, here's what I started to do. This is what I did to become, you know, at that time wealthy and now wealthier, of course. And this is what I was doing when I was broke. Here's the two differences and do whatever the hell you want. And it seemed to help people. And, they, and then they started to ask me to, you know, help them and teach them. And so I started teaching the people the differences I did from when I was broke to when I got rich. And, and I'm still doing that. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I want to tell all of the listeners out there that I, that I give Harv a lot of credit for my success because I, I found this story about eight, 10 years ago. I know the fitness center story. I, I listen to that all the time. <clears throat> He's written a great book. You guys all have to pick the book up, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I've written a book review on it. Um, his messages might be hard for you guys to swallow in the beginning because it's, it's not what he's saying. It's what you're listening to. And for me in the beginning, it's like getting punched in the gut, right? Because your fruits are your roots. That, that, that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about what happens to you. And I really resented his message in the beginning. I've given it to my friends and what he, what it did to me was it really made me look at myself and I just kept stuck through it. I mean, I listen, I got CDs. I've got all his stuff. I love his mess. I think his message is amazing. So I want to dive into the book. I mean, that's how you got into the space. Let's go into the book. And, you know, how did you get the idea for the book? And how did you write the book? Oh, that's really easy. So after I became a millionaire, uh, two years later, I wasn't a millionaire anymore. <laughs> In fact, I was pretty well broke again. And I'm going, I'm, I'm literally sitting in my house crying. I have $2,000 left to my name. And I'm going, how on earth could this have happened? And so, um, you know, I started, you know, recognizing, I, I want to get into the whole story about what happened where I, I started realizing there was some, uh, let's say, issues that I, anger issues that I might have had and, and uh, ways of thinking that weren't making me happy and they obviously weren't making me successful. A friend of mine suggested that I go to a, a personal development seminar, which I had resisted literally for years and years and years. Um, I went, I recognized that there were certain ways I was being, certain things I was thinking that were just not overly supportive, both in happiness and success. I uh, began working on, and I, and I also had a, 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 another hobby, which, which was actually um, kind of like uh, super learning. Like how do you learn fast to remember more? And that had a lot to do with brain change technology. Mm -hmm. So I kind of married the two together and started doing this brain change technology, belief change technology on myself. And lo and behold, you know, a year later I had my million back and I was going like, how did this happen? And so I started realizing, and this is very important for everybody. And I'm going to go off a little bit, not normal script here, but if you're, however you're listening or watching this, I want you to recognize, you know, what, what uh, Gino is talking about here is that I, I formulated this triangle, you know, so to figure out a triangle with a point at the base. Okay. So the point in the bottom and the triangle. And what I recognize what there's that, that I had made success very, very complicated. And I started realizing that there's only three, how many, three elements to success. Number on the on this triangle and then the left side here is called rv and rv stands for the right vehicle and everybody is you're in real estate so you better listen to this everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> right vehicle especially at the right time right vehicle at the right time then it goes to rk rk stands for right knowledge right knowledge both and that means general business knowledge and specific business knowledge so if you're in real estate you don't just have to know how to market you or whatever else you have to know in general negotiations. Those are all general. You need to know specific uh, knowledge and techniques and strategies for what you are trying to do in that market that you guys do multifamily homes. Now, if you guys, uh, anyone else has come from mobile home parks, you know, you say, Oh, mobile home. I'll just buy a multifamily home. Like, no, you better learn and understand the nuances, the distinctions that are in multifamily homes before you start putting your hard-earned dollars in there. 
That's why they should be happy that they're with you in this case. But it's mm -hmm. called business-specific knowledge. And then the one on the bottom, the base of the whole thing is our why. And that's the right you. So you got the right vehicle, the right knowledge, and the right you. And you're the pin to the off. So when Gino says, you know, the, the roots and the fruits, what he means is that the, the, the roots of the, uh, so that, that the fruits of the tree, the result comes from, starts at the roots of the tree. It doesn't start from the branch. The branch starts from the trunk. The trunk starts from the roots. So you've got to go to the roots of the tree. If you get the roots right, then there's a shot that the, that the fruits will be okay. And the, in this case, what we're talking about, this is where the book comes from. In this case, the roots are the way you think. And everything comes from the way you think. So again, write this down. The formula for the, what we call the process of manifestation, which, which we've talked about in the book. Your thoughts lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, which lead to your results. So your results come from your actions. Most people say, yeah, my results, yeah, I get that. But where do your actions come from? They come from your thoughts. They originate in your thoughts. So that's, that's, you know, that's the, basically the roots, you know, your, your thoughts. Now, here's the big question for everybody, and this is why I wrote the book. Where do your thoughts come from? Why do you think the specific thoughts you think and the person next to you, especially if you're married to them, think something completely different, right? <laughs> Why do you think the way you think? And the answer is you have been, I have been, we all have been taught mm -hmm. to think the way we think. And then we think that way and we believe that way A is normal and B is the only way, but it's not. And it may not, it may be your way, but the only question here is how successful are you? And I'm going to venture to say simply this, if you're not as successful as you'd like to be, it's because of one of those three elements, the right vehicle, the right knowledge, but you can have both of those perfectly. But if you're not the right you, especially in here, the software isn't, isn't supportive, it's over. It doesn't matter. You can have a perfect piece of real estate. You're going to blow it. You're going to have great knowledge. You're going to blow it. If you're not the right you, if you don't have the right way of the, the way of thinking that is supportive to happiness and success, especially success. And Jake, that's why I hated Harvard when the first time I heard him on, on a disc, because it was just like all about, damn, it's about responsibility, right? It's about my actions not, and my thoughts. You, and I was yeah. like, damn, I mean, that really hurts because it's not, I was, I was taught in life school. It's not what people, what people say is about them. What you hear is about you, right? So I was listening to his message and it was all about what I was hearing, you know, and it was really troubling in the beginning. But then after you figure it out and you say, I'm responsible for my life and for my thoughts, no, his message is awesome, and it's great. Well, on, on top of that, we just had a call on this where we, you know, we were talking about the difference between mobile home parks and apartments, and we've never done a mobile home park, and there's, there's definite gaps where we think we know, but we don't because we haven't done it before. So, I mean, he hit, hit the nail right on the head there. And it's specific knowledge. You have to phone a right. specific niche, whether you want to do a single-family house or multifamily. That's what we're always this is why, And this is why I say learn first, start quickly, but start small. Learn first, start quickly, but start very small. Because you are going to make mistakes at the beginning. No matter, and here's what people do say, okay, I'm gonna learn first, and then that's it, they're finished. Then they're, then they're seminar junkies for 20 years, or they're reading books, or listening to the courses, or listening to ours for 20 years, and they never do nothing. They don't do anything, right? That's useless. So you gotta start quickly. You gotta, once you start learning, get in the game, Momentum. get up to bat, see what it's like to have that fastball coming at you. You're going to miss the first 20 of them. Okay. But maybe you'll, you'll nick the 21st one and maybe you'll nick the 28th one and maybe you'll nick the 20 and, and then you might get a hit and then you start. So you got to get going. You got to get momentum. One of the things I just got off another, uh, one of my calls and it was, I say to people, they, they say, well, I'm not, I'm not, how do I get myself motivated? How do I get motivated? How do I stay motivated? I go, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're not motivated, all that tells me is one thing, your business sucks. 
That's right. Your life sucks. That's what I was like, going to say. It's on them. They suck. <laughs> Man, your business sucks. I don't know anybody who has a business or investments or real estate business that's flying that isn't motivated. I'm sorry. And, and because there's no momentum going, okay? And so, you know, I didn't make it up. A body in motion will tend to remain in motion. A body at rest will, attain, will tend to remain at rest. And that is Sir Isaac Newton who created that. And it's, it's a life physics principle. And you need to get into action. You need to get into action for that reason. And you need to get into action so that you can learn quickly. And that's how you learn. You get in the game. You know, don't wait until you know everything. Know enough to get into action. But then start small because you're going you're gonna to screw up and things are going to things that you didn't, you didn't expect are going to happen. And that's why, you know, working with guys like you, I think everybody's listening. Uh, you know, they, they're doing themselves a big favor. And I'm not just promoting you guys. I'm just saying in general, learn, but get going. You know, start, get in the game. You can I learn. You can learn. I always say this. You can learn a thousand times more and a thousand times faster by getting in the game than preparing for the game. Jake, it's funny because all the gurus say, I got to go big on my first deal. I got to go big. Everyone's talking about going big. He's the only guy out there that says go small, but go quick. I, I, I like that message more than anybody. I think that's the best message I've heard. And I totally agree with that because I think well, we try to get I, I say this. I say think big, start small. Yes. All right. Think big. That's our new motto, Jake. Think big, start small. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, because if you don't think big, it's freaking boring. Yep. Okay, and you're not going to have anything going in your life. And then where, where's, where's your at? You know, you're, you don't have any urgency. You don't have anything going for you if you don't think big. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's got to be understanding. You got to have a big vision, you know, and then you got to come back to, to, to right now. You start mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. and just start, do the process. Getting rich is not, is not a overnight thing necessarily. And it's not a, you know, snap your fingers thing. By that, I mean, I mean it's a process. You know, you guys started with, I think you just, you know, told me your story. What was it, 2013 or 15 you started no, with? 2013, yeah, 2013 with a 25 unit apartment complex, which really okay. was only a $600,000 investment. It wasn't a big, okay. you know, kind of thing. Okay. And then and then 2013 and today's 2018, it's five years. So was it five minutes or five years that you went to $50 million? It was five years, but it was two years of getting our asses kicked before that. Where there you go. Us, you guys are nuts. Get the hell out of here. And we got two years of rejection before we even right. got into the first little shitty deal. Right. And, and also your so. mindset, your, I guarantee that your mindset was we want to create a, a substantial business out of this. Mm -hmm. Do something well. Get rich yeah. and, and help people. It wasn't like, oh, I think I just want to get into you know, get a, get a little house here and get some extra pocket money and, you know, get a little part-time income for, you know, an extra couple of hundred dollars of cash flow. No, no. If you want that, everybody, if you want that, do that, but don't listen to the three of us. Mm -hmm. That's not where we're at. I'm into getting rich. I'm into freedom, man. I'm into freedom. And I'll, I'll, and we can talk about that after, but you're not going to do that on a couple of hundred bucks of extra cash a year. Come on, get with it. You can do better than that. You start there, but 200 turns to four, turns to eight, turns to 2,000, turns to 20,000, okay? Let's get a move on here. That's right. And I love that you said that because the next question segues perfectly. Why should people become rich? I'm a practicing Catholic. I was always taught, be pious. You know I mean? Money is the root of all evil. Why should people become rich? I've been enlightened. I know why people should become rich. I listened to your message. I want to hear it from you exactly why you think people should become rich. Well, listen, everybody has the right to do whatever they want. If you don't, if you don't think people, you, know, you want to become rich for some reason, then I would say just say just this. Look at your reason. Mm -hmm. Think about your reason. Examine your reason because it's a belief. And we've heard, we've heard a thousand of them. You know, I do seminars for four, five, six thousand people at a time, weekend seminars all over the world. And I, all I'm saying is that I hear, if there is a reason, I've heard it a million times over, okay? But they're, they're really just beliefs. And they're ingrained conditions that you were taught or you picked up somewhere through either what you heard, what you saw, what you experienced, whatever. But it's a belief that's not working for you in the, re, in the area of wealth. So bottom line is this, why become rich? First of all, number one is lifestyle. I mean, I just think very simply, I mean, you can be happy not being rich. Of course you can. And, and nobody's saying, listen, everybody, nobody is saying money is everything. No, don't start going, oh, money isn't everything. 
yeah, that's just another, you know, broke belief. That's right. <laughs> you know, we already know that. We agree. Uh -huh. There's a lot of things that are, that are very, very important that aren't money. Hello? You know, we're not idiots here. Everybody knows that. That's, that's, that's A. That's, that's, that's kindergarten here that money's not everything. Oh, that's news. Okay, we know that. But it is something. And money is important in today's world. And, and, and a lot of people go, well, money's not all that important. You know, everybody who says that doesn't have any money. Have any. That's and, right. and it's because they say that. Like here, they go, well, you know, money's not, well, well, you know, money's not as important as other things. What's more, it, 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 money's not as important as love. Money's not as important as family. No, money's not as important as health. Why the comparison? Where did this come from? What's more important, your arm or your leg? Maybe they're both important in what they do, and they're not important in what they don't do, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, money's very important in this world, and it's not overly important, but it's certainly important. So, number one is lifestyle. Most people agree you can live a nicer mm -hmm. lifestyle, a more secure lifestyle with money than without. And so, you know, that's the first thing, you know, you talk about the chicken thing. I always said that one of the key, key <laughs> things that, that always, always bothered me is that uh -huh. when I was broke, what I noticed was that when I go to a restaurant, I'd look at the menu and the, I wouldn't even look at what, what, the, what, what the food was. I look at the prices <laughs> and I go, you know, $26, 24, 22, 16, uh, you know, eight, you know, um, 12, uh, 10, 8.95. Oh, I'll have that. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's the chicken again. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So, you know, I started looking at myself and going, is this really the way I want to live? Looking at the freaking prices of the menu? You know, don't you deserve to at least eat what you want? Come on. I mean, that's, and today, you know, today I'm a little bit older. It's a little bit further. Today, that amount of money is nothing. You go, oh, it's, I, li I live in Maui in the, in the winter. I'm here right now. You go, Oh, the prices in Maui are so expensive. It's like, you know, you can have a piece of fish is $42. I go, versus what? $28? Is that $14 going to kill you? Well, I'll tell you what, you need to earn a lot more money, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that's your problem, you earn more money. Uh -huh. $14 is going to stop you from eating what you want? Come on, get off it. Eat. So Every time I go to a restaurant in the last year and a half, that story has been in my mind. And when I became financially free a year and a half ago, it sort of left me. I've got six kids. So when we go out to lunch, it's 250 bucks. So, and my kids yeah. are eating certain strip tape. And, and, and now that I look at that, that scarcity mentality, like you said, if you're going to go out, enjoy it. If you don't want to go out, don't enjoy it. So that every time I open a menu, I think about you. And I always think about MP, market price. That's where I'm going for. I want the surf and I want the turf. I want <laughs> both, right? And again, we're not, everybody listen, we're not suggesting you go overboard and spend money that you don't have. We're not suggesting that. No. We're suggesting that you get rich. We're suggesting you become financially free at a very high level. And again, other people aren't going to suggest that. And I, I can't even speak for, for Gino and Jake. I, I can only speak for me. When I teach, I teach passive income. I teach financial freedom. But I don't teach getting by stuff. I'm sorry. You know, you know, I'm just getting by with, with my social security and my extra couple of little checks coming in. I have enough to live on. Great. Go to another teacher. I have no interest in that. Mm -hmm. Have enough to live on, barely making it. That's called struggle to me. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. How about a lot more than enough to live on? How about enough to do basically what you want with your time and your life? How about enough to be able to help some other people? How about enough to be able to be not just comfortable, but more than comfortable, okay? And so, yeah, number one is lifestyle. Number to get rich. Number two is contribution. I believe that if you have the wherewithal to get rich or become financially free at a high level, that you, it is your duty to do so. Why? So you can help other people that just don't have that wherewithal. You know, you were, however hard you worked and however hard you do work, if you are fortunate and blessed enough to be successful and make a lot of money at it, I think it's a good idea to possibly help some other people, whether it's your time, whether it's the money, whether it's, whether it's teaching like, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, Jake and Gino are doing, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, it's about contribution. And I think if you have the ability to get rich, you need to freaking go for it. Because not everybody has that ability, and then you want to give back. 
right? And then the third thing is to get rich is to, is to it forces you to grow. It forces you to get bigger. It forces you to get better at whatever you're doing. If you have, if, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're in the NFL football, you know, football league, and your goal is to, you know, be better than last year, you are not winning the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. To win the Super Bowl, your goal has to be to win the Super Bowl, not to get next year's early draft choices. You understand? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to win the Super Bowl, that's what your goal has to be. You can't just be getting by, just making it. That's not our game here. Mm -hmm. And so I believe this, you know, there's a saying that says, if you shoot for the, for the stars, you're at least going to hit the moon. Well, the problem is most people don't even shoot for the ceiling in their house and they wonder what the problem is. And the problem isn't that your goals are too big and you miss them, is that your goals are too small and you hit them. Big problem. And then you're stuck. <laughs> and you're stuck. <laughs> and everybody, everybody get rich. It's good for the country. It's good for you. It's good for taxes. It's, it's good for everybody. That's right. Be, I'm going to say this right now. Being broke doesn't help anyone. It doesn't make you better than anyone. It doesn't make you more spiritual. It doesn't make you more pious. It doesn't make you more intelligent. It just makes you broke. And all that means is you're really, really bad at one of the important areas of life. How about starting to get good at that? And you'll feel a lot better about yourself. You just got jab in the stomach, Jake. That's what I like. It's all about poor people don't build churches, right? Poor people don't build hospitals. That's what I took away from it. Only rich people do that. So I think that's one of the reasons why we should aim to be rich. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you can help a lot of other people with it too. You, you can help people, but it's about being in control of your destiny and having a good life and taking care of your family, whoever else you want to take care of. I, don't, I want to be in control. I don't want to be, you know, in the back seat getting pushed around being told what to do and getting the 899 chicken, all right? I want a little bit of that surf and turf, all right, baby? Come on now. Surf and turf. Here, here's, the, here's the cool thing. The richer you get, the less you need that stuff. <laughs> oh, come on. You know, it's we, true. He's had the same conversation I, with me, like, for the last, like, year. It's like, you know, you know, we, you know, things have been really picking up for us. And it's like, well, you can go out and get this. And you, you want to go get the Lambo or whatever. And it's like, I, I don't, don't want that now. That. Just, exactly, that's, right. like the, that's the ass kicker, right? Yeah. So. So hard, but, but there are, are always little little intricacies that all of us end up having, and everybody is different. Because okay. I, you know, I, I belong to several country clubs and stuff like that, where the people are nice. I don't belong to, you know, weirdo country clubs where the people are jerks. But um, everyone seems to have the same thing. They're always got something. Like my thing is houses. I don't know why, but I have uh, five personal houses now. And, you know, I buy and sell and whatever. They're all in country clubs or resorts, whatever. I have a, a crap load of investment real estate and multifamily and all this other stuff, whatever. I don't own a boat. I don't own a plane. I don't wear fancy clothes. I don't go shopping. I don't, there's a lot of stuff. I don't do, I don't do a lot of, I don't, you know, I only do a couple of vacations here because my life is a vacation. If I go, it's, you know, it's a hundred grand vacation. I, I don't know why I like buying you know, five, $10 million houses all over the place. <laughs> I don't get to live in them that much. But, you know, that's, a, that's an, an issue, but I enjoy it. And you know what? The best thing about it, I love bringing my family. I love sending my family to them. You know, I love having my family and my friends come and join us and have a, a, a wonderful experience. That's the best part of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I'll say this is it, everyone needs to understand that money is a result. Wealth is a result. It's a result of the actions you take. The actions you take are a result of the way you think. The way you think is a result of your conditioning and that's what we deal with here. One of the things that really uh, stuck with me in the book was you talk about the money blueprint and the financial thermostat. Can you describe that to people what that is? Because that really, really made me, you know, made me click where people making a hundred grand a year they're going to make 105 grand a year, 102 grand a year for the next 10 and 15 years. That really stuck with me. So can you just dive into that real quick for us? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, a money blueprint is simply the way you think about money. Mm -hmm. And what we, what we say is it's just similar to a financial thermostat. So we are, we're basically, we're on automatic. We're on autopilot. All of us are. We're, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I have to admit, I don't know you guys all that well. We're not like friends from way back or whatever. And I don't know a lot of your your uh, students and participants, um, but but you know, bottom line, um, 
we're robots. You and me and everyone listening, we're a robot. You, you're a computer on legs, basically, which is how computers got designed from us, really. Basically, we get conditioned like a robot, right? We have verbal programming. We have uh, uh, visual programming. We have modeling. We have experience, experiences that, yes, no, go away, go to. Uh, and we learn this and ingest it. We have files that tell us, you know, when this happens, do this. When that happens, do that. We are on automatic for the most part. Most of the choices we make are automatic choices. And so we're, we are conditioned for that. And so it's very similar to a, a thermostat. So here we are, you're, you know, you're in a room and you know, the thermostat is set for 70 degrees, okay? And it's hot outside and the windows are open and the temperature in the room gets to 75 degrees. What will happen automatically? the thermostat will automatically kick in and drive that temperature in that room right back to 70 degrees where it was set for. Same with, if you're in the room, the thermostat's 70 degrees, we are, it's very cold outside, the windows are open, it's 65 degrees in the room. What will automatically happen every time? The thermostat will kick in and drive it right back to 70 degrees. Meaning that no matter what, no matter what you do in the outside situation, your outside circumstances won't matter it's the thermostat that if what it's set for will always matter. You'll always keep coming back to the same place. And people ask me all the time, Harv, you say, I think you asked me this earlier, you said, Harv, you'll, you say in your book, give me five minutes with anyone. I can predict your financial future for the rest of your life. How? Very simple. Your future is going to be the same as it is now. What's going to change? You've got the same autopilot going. You've got the same thought process, which leads to the same actions, same decisions, same actions, same results. As you said, if you're earning about 100 grand a year right now, and you've been earning that for a little while, and you know, wherever it is, that, that's what that, that your mentality has got you to the $100,000 mark. Mm -hmm. To go to a million dollar mark, you need a different mentality. Different wiring, I'm sorry, all right? Your wiring, based on your belief, your thoughts got you to there. And that's all it's gonna get you. And then you keep, you can say, well, if I could just, if I just get into multi, uh, multi-family, then I'm gonna go from my five years of making 100,000 a year in my mobile homes or whatever that was, I'm gonna go to a million dollars a year. No, you won't, no, you won't. You're not set. You have a governor on your accelerator pedal, everyone. It's called your beliefs and your thought processes, especially your non-supportive ones, the ones that don't let you go any further based on certain beliefs that you have around money and wealth and yourself. Those are a big block. They stop your accelerator from going past 100,000 in this case. It doesn't matter that you go down the highway, super highway or a dirt road. You can't go faster than that, period. That block is there. What do I do? Remove the block. Examine the way you think. Examine your beliefs, which we help people do, obviously. Remove the block so you can step on the gas pedal and go to 200, go to 400, go to 600. And that's what I found with my own, with my own life. How did I go from zero to millionaire and back to zero again? That's what I was looking for. How did I do that? How could that happen? All right. So when I started doing this work, I started realizing about programming and conditioning. And guess who else would always be going up and down and up and down and up and down in their financial life? Did anyone guess my parents, my dad? Well, if you did, you're correct. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I just, I'm on automatic. That's what I saw. He was in the building business. So he would borrow all kinds of money and we'd be completely broke or all this money build, you know, um, um, buy, buy land, subdivide it, and then, and then build. And when we sold everything two or three years later, we'd be rich. And I'd be, you know, I'd be a kid. So here I was, I would ask my dad for, you know, a dollar to go to the fair. And he'd go, a dollar? What do you think I made of money? And he'd slap me, get away from me, you know, a dollar, always sponging off of me. I didn't know what was going on. And then, it, so then three years later, two years later, you know, I'd be, I'd say, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go to the, the county fair. He'd go, here's 50 bucks. Go have a good time. I'd go, 
what are you crazy? Like, you know, what are you like? I'm, are you like, you know, not so bipolar? What's the matter with you? A dollar, but you're killing me. And now you're giving me 50 bucks without me even asking, are you nuts? I'm going like, what happened? So I didn't realize what I was witnessing internally, subconsciously. And my dad would go, all I saw was go up and down, up and down, up and down. I didn't. So what happens is that was my program. The yo-yo effect, up and down, up and down. Make it, spend it, make it, lose it, make it, give it. I don't know, just the results there. And so once I went from a million, from nothing to a million back to zero, and I went, holy crap, how's this? And then I started working on this stuff and recognizing that I had to let go of that government, let go of those beliefs that are causing that problem. Once I let go, I got to tell you, it's been up and up and up and up and up for the rest of my life. And that's what you can do too. That's awesome. Uh, something in the book that I really touched upon that I really loved was those wealth files. I don't know if you, you can dive into one or two of the wealth files. I, I, lo I love them all. I don't know how many there are. I think there's 20 wealth files in there. Uh, the first, first one that I love is rich people believe I create my life. The poor people believe life happens to me. Um, can you expand on it? That's really powerful. And people, you know, they don't get that. But now I'm on the other side. It's like, I totally, I totally get that. I totally agree with that. Yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly what Jake was saying earlier about being in control of your life. Listen, if, if I'm going to say it bluntly like this, you are in, you, you are your life. You are holding the steering wheel of your life. It's not your boss. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your kids. It's, it's not your business. It's not the weather. It's not the universe. You are in control of your life. Okay. And, and you are holding the steering wheel of your life. And if you're not, if you're not controlling that steering wheel, who is, you know, are you, so most people will say they, they become the victim. Oh, and they, so they blame things. Oh, the economy was bad or, or, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, the, this, uh, the, the, uh, the idiot vendor blew it, you know, he, he's a nut or this happened or that happened, or they justify their situation. They say, well, it wasn't that big deal anyways. Our money's not that important. Freedom's not all that important. Or they complain all day long. So here's the deal. None of those things are helping you. No, at least if you say, I create my life, at least you say, I am at the steering wheel. You do the best you can with the steering wheel. At least you're at the steering wheel. You're not in the passenger going, oh, look out, be careful. That's what people do. That's how you become unsuccessful and very unhappy when you don't feel like you have any control. And I'll tell you what, the people who feel like they're in no control, not only there are they the most unsuccessful and unhappy, they're in the mental institutions. And one of the one of the psychologists will let you know that one of the keys to well-being is a what they call a locus of control, where you feel you have some kind of control in your life. So being a victim does not help you. Blaming anything or anyone doesn't help you. You know, you all know, and you guys teach the same thing. You go, oh, the the economy is not good. So I, you know, that's why I'm broke. And I hey, hello, uh, when the economy is bad, I don't think I need to tell you, that's when you need to have some cash and start buying the stuff, right? Like, hello, this is a, either you're stockpiling or whatever, but you utilize that situation. So, oh, cry, baby. No one's crying for you. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. So it, it, life isn't happening to you because even if, if stuff, spelled S-H-I-T, if stuff happens to you that's not very good, it's your reaction, it is your response to that that will determine your outcome, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm not being Pollyanna here goes, oh, you know, just being positive. No, I'm not trying to be positive. I'm just saying there is, when stuff, circumstances occur, the ball's coming your way. You either adjust to the ball or you don't. That is not up to the ball, I'm sorry. That is up to your prowess at hitting the ball with the bait. You're the one with the bat, okay? That ball, balls are coming at you all day long. Properties are staring there, sitting there. People are buying and selling. All those balls are coming. In the real estate business, you have a thousand balls coming in your midst every day. I have one question. What are you doing about every one of those? What are you doing about some of those? Can you pick your winners and losers? Can you hit that one of those balls out of the park? Can you get that base hit? That's not up to anything. Else. That's up to you. I agree. Wow. That's what I said. Uh, the message is, message is powerful. Um, you know, the, the next one, Jake, rich people choose to get paid based on results. Poor people choose to get paid, paid based on time. 
Now, only a rich guy can figure this out because I was always working, 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 and I thought I was getting busy and making money that way. So this one really touched me when I uh, actually figured it out. Can you expand on that one a little bit? Yeah, it, it, everybody needs to write this down. Wealth rule number one. Write this down, please. No limits on your income. Wealth rule number one. No limits on your income. And if you are being based, if you're being paid based on time, you only have what, 24 hours in a day, everyone's given the same amount. And therefore, since you only have 24 hours in a day, your time is what? Limited. And if your time is limited, then you're getting paid based on your time. That become, means your income is limited. And you just broke wealth rule number one, no limits on your income. Everyone who's paid on their time, you're going to be very fortunate to be financially successful because you're, you're limited. Mm -hmm. So even people say, I make a hundred dollars an hour. Great. I don't care. You know, in my books, you're broke. You know, secondly, if you're being paced on, based on your time, you know, you're, you're all to me, that's what a job is. And I'm not disparaging people with a job. I think it's a start for a lot of people. I think it's a good idea for, for certain people, at least for a certain amount of time. I'm not a big believer in letting go of your income until it can be replaced. I'm sorry if that doesn't jive with what you guys teach. I don't like people being broke. I don't like people being stressed out of their mind. I don't like people not being able to pay their mortgage or their rent because they have no income. Keep your freaking income and work a bit more, work, work harder, work part of it. Start building up your other income until you can replace it. Don't stress yourself out. Don't dive into empty pools. Right. That's what I say. You guys might negate that, but no, I did the same thing. Gino did the same thing. Yeah. I was working, you know, full-time job and then doing the multifamily at night and weekends. He was working, he owned a restaurant was doing the multifamily at night and weekends. And last night we had guys here till nine o'clock at night with lights on up at the top of the driveway and stolen new uh, mailbox posts. And I, I like my heart went out to them. Cause I like, I love you guys as hustle. You guys are working your asses off, but it's exactly what you're saying. They're limited by how many hours. So in their mind, they're going to work more hours to get rich or to make more money, but it's never going to pan out because there's only so many hours in the day. The guy probably worked from nine, worked till nine, went home, slept, got up and did it again. You're not getting ahead that way. You're making a little bit more, but you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a question of, 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 of getting some momentum and understanding that there's a different mentality between rich and middle class, as you're talking about, uh, you know, a broke person. So here's the poor person. It's five o'clock. Your lights are not done yet. And they're going home. I don't care. I'm, my shift is over. I'm out of here. Okay. I don't care what's going on. Right. Middle class person or someone who's semi, semi successful is going to say, Hey, I can get a few hours of overtime here. So I'm going to do that and, um, and make myself a few extra bucks so I can go on vacation to Hawaii next year. Good. That's a good thing. But that, that's not rich mentality. Rich mentality is not going to be leaving at five o'clock or leaving at nine o'clock. Rich mentality is say, hey, I'm gonna own the business that collects this money and brings in the revenue and pay other people to, to, do, to do the work, all right? And it's the same in, in the real estate situation. At some point in time, you wanna be able to, listen, I just got off as one of my tough love calls. I have a thousand people I coach every month. They say, one of the, one of the I think you asked me this question earlier, so I'll answer it now because I think it fits. What is one of the, what is your, one of your biggest business and success success secrets? Can I answer that now? Sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's simple. Here it is. Replace yourself. I don't care what business. I don't care if you're in real estate, if you're in garbage collection, if you're in in landscaping. I don't care if you're in plumbing. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care what it is. If you want to be wealthy, you must replace yourself. What does that mean? It means you can't be the one doing the work. Why? Because we already said you're limited. And wealth rule number one says what? No limits on your income. So you have to create a system. What's the word? System that works instead of you. A system that creates the value instead of you. Now, the beautiful thing about real estate and the way you guys teach it, and what you guys do is you have a vehicle that you're helping people get involved in that is the primary system. Those houses, those apartments that are bringing in that money are working for you. They're your little soldiers. They're working for you every day. Just the fact that they're stationary means nothing. 
they're your soldiers, right? And you want to get as many soldiers, as many workers out there for you as possible. If you can get one working for you, you know, that's an extra couple of hundred bucks. You can get 10, that's an extra 2,000. You get 100, that's 20,000. You get 1,000, that's 200,000. People go, 200,000 a month? Yes, 200,000 a month. That is a good start, okay? And what does that mean? It means if you're the one that has to be doing all that work, you can't do it. And you start small, you keep on growing, you create a system, you learn from, from these guys, and you do what they're teaching you because they've done it. Don't, that's another thing. When you're making up your system, you're creating your business, you're creating your life, why would you, you want to try and figure this out on your own? Yes, your mind and yourself and your ego is going to do that anyways. You don't need to give it any help. You're going to want to do your own style, your own thing, your own system, your own way. Everybody wants to do their own way. It's got to be my way. Great. Wonderful. Do it your way and be broke or do it their way. Let them teach you and then be rich. And when you're rich, you have the right to do it your way. <laughs> right? I say, you can do it your way as soon as you get rich. Before that, you listen to me. Okay? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Short answer, Jake. Yeah. So, you know, this kind of goes back to how you got started off, Harv. Everybody that comes on the show, and this is maybe a little bit selfish on my part, but I, I want to know about your habits. What habits do you do either on a daily or weekly basis that has led you to success? Well, I think probably for me, um, I would say the habit that, that, that works for me, probably the best, I'm going to put it in two ways. The, the words I'm going to use is, it's almost like a program. And it's called whatever it takes. It's wit. Whatever it takes. Certain people are programmed. Their way of thinking is, you know, if it's convenient, I'm there. If it's easy, I'm there. If I can make it, I will. I'm just, I used to be like that. But I was broke. I was broke for a decade thinking that way and being that way. You know, I'm... I'm busy right now. I'll, I'll get to it later. Um, I got to do this or, you know, I, Oh, there's a big concert uh, happening in another town. I'm going to go there for the weekend. It was always, you know, something, 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 every, if it was easy, I would do it. If it wasn't, but I learned the hard way. And, and the, the philosophy is simply this. If, if you're willing to only do what's easy, life will be hard. But if you're willing to do what's hard, life will become easy. And it doesn't mean that it has to be struggle, everybody. Here's a big difference. Working hard and putting out a lot of effort and energy and struggle are not the same. Struggle is simply effort laced with negative emotion. Let me say this again. The definition of struggle is effort laced with negative emotion. That negative emotion is what you add to the party, okay? You have a nice, uh, a nice ice cream cone, right? And then you start throwing, you know, stuff on top, all the sprinkle that you added that you're adding the struggle. It's not there inherently. It's just work. It's just energy. Everything is energy. So I became, I went the other way and became crazy at what we call uh, uh, the enlightened warrior. We, and we teach that stuff in, in, you know, in, our, in, in our power programs, but you know, be a, be a warrior, be an enlightened warrior, do what it takes, period. And what I mean by that is that you need to become a success warrior. And that, that means you do whatever it takes. I mean, and go back to an example of the warrior, like a real warrior in the real world, you know, with real battle, real guns, real arrows, with everything, they're fighting for their life. You know, you're being attacked. There's, there's another uh, uh, group or, or troops coming at you. They're, they're coming at you with rifles and guns and tanks and whatever. Are you going to say, oh, I think it's a little inconvenient right now? <laughs> Is that what you're, it's not going to be easy. So I think I'll just sit here and get my head chopped off. <laughs> I don't think so. It's a life and death thing. You're going to get up and do what you need to do to make it happen and survive. And in this case, thrive. So, you know, working 18 hours a day, you know, 24 seven, basically seven days a week for months at a time was my MO. And people say, well, do you have to work that hard all the time? Uh, yeah. At the beginning. Sorry. And I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying 
It's what it does for me, what, it worked, what happened for me. And I have two and a half million other students. And if you think you're going to get away without putting the energy out and getting a lot of energy, see, money is energy. Everything's energy. Ener and, and to get that energy, a, a lot of energy coming in, you got to put a lot of energy out. But here's, so here's the thing. If, and what I teach is this. And what I believe is this. So people say, do you have to work hard? Yeah, you do. Uh, do, do you have to put a lot of effort? Yep. A lot of energy? Yep. Can you be balanced? Kind of, sort of. Yeah, you can have your other elements too, but you're not going to, nothing is going to be as close to your business as the amount of time and energy you're putting at that for a short period of time. You understand that? Mm -hmm. For a short period of time. Why? Because what are you going to be doing, everyone, when you're putting your energy and you're working hard? What are you going to be working hard at? Can I get some response here? What are you, I, I said this 10 times already, what are you going to be working your ass off doing? Creating what? GL. A system. <laughs> I'm waiting for you. To my... replace yourself. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Understand? Yep. You're not going to be working your buns off to do more of working your buns off. That's how broke people do it. Rich people do it by saying, I'm going to work 12, 14 hours a day, six, seven days a week, and I'm going to do it for two or three years. And by the time I'm done, I will have created a system that can work without me. And that, my friends, is called freedom. And you need to create that. You create the freedom, it doesn't fall on your head. And you're not going to create it by just working over and over the same darn thing, you know, buying a few more here. And the beautiful thing about real estate is that every single time you buy a property, whatever, it hopefully the cash flows and you now have that money working for you. But you've got to create a system if you want to get bigger to be able to purchase those properties without you having to run through every classified ad or online ad yourself. You've got to be able to do you got to be able to pretend you live on the beach and you like it and you're sitting there suntanning or in your hot tub or golfing every day. And if you have that intention, when you create your business, say, I want to earn a million dollars a year and golf every day. Mwah! Now you've got it. That's how you set up your life and your system. You will create freedom. But if you say, I just want to earn a lot of money, right? And not, and then that doesn't create freedom. Or if you say, just going to keep on buying houses, that doesn't create freedom. A system that replaces you will create freedom. And that's one of the beautiful things about what you guys are teaching. But Harv, the funny thing is, as you become more successful in life, we're branching out into more businesses. We're creating more systems. So to us, it seems like we're having so much fun. So it doesn't seem like work to us. So we've got the real estate we created a system there. We've got an education platform. We're creating a system here. We're trying to source products from China. We're creating a system there. So we're creating more and more systems where one day it might take us over. But to us, Jake, does it seem like work to you? I mean, it's a lot of fun to us. No, so. no, but, but what everything he said was spot on because the first three years of the business, it was 18 hours every day. And last week was 18 hours every day, but you know why? Because exactly what you just said, we're looking at creating a brokerage at some point where we're looking at buying products from China. We're looking for complete vertical integration. Where we control every aspect of the business. When we run out of those, yeah, we can pull back a little bit, but to your point, I'm having fun right now and I don't want to because I'm, you know, I'm, you know what the number is for me now and what I started writing down, my coach's sheet is over there, but it's one B now. I want to get to a billion. I want to get to a billion dollars in assets under management. And that's, that's where I'm going, right? So it's going to take a little bit more vertical integration. We're building the things out and going up and, uh, and we're going to get there, but it's going to take a few more 18 hour days to keep going. We could stop right now and I could, you know, you can sit on the beach at your house. I could go out to the lake, whatever we want to do, but I'm not done yet. I got a lot more in the tank. So mm -hmm. we're, 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 well, as you say, Jake, I think the key thing for everybody here is I would like to leave, like to make sure everybody understands this one word. What do you want? Everybody yep. wants the same thing. They want choice. Mm -hmm. They want choice. So they want to be in your position where you can say, you know what? I think I'm going to take a couple of years off now. And I'm not going to work very much. I'm taking a couple of years off. I'm going to make my, you know, 50, 100 grand a month. And I'll be happy with that. And if I want to get back into it, I will. And blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, right? They want that, that choice. Mm -hmm. Or they say, no, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I want the choice to continue mm -hmm. and do more. You want choice. You don't want people... Like you know, we're all the same, and I'm sure everybody who's listening to all of us, because we're all entrepreneurial, we don't like people 
you know, I don't, I'm, I hate, I, I don't, I'm going to say this. Everybody who's listening to us right now at some level, you know, at some level, more or less, does not like to be told what to do. Amen. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do anything you want. Just do not tell me what to do, okay? Yeah, with you. Make it my choice, all right? If you're smart and you know how, just say, hey, would you like to do this or this? Okay, well, they're, they're, I don't want to do either, but if, since you gave me a choice, at least I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, we just, as entrepreneurs and people who want freedom, we don't like to be told what to do. I can't imagine, I'm not, I, I can't have a job because I, I'm, I'm unemployable. I was always unemployable. That's why I went through 14 jobs and, and failed at all of them because I was unemployable. You know, people telling me what to do, I can't handle it, right? Hey, you were here at 9.05. See the sign says 9 o'clock. I go, see ya. I'll see you later. I'm out of here, right? Don't t- so we want to run our own lives. And, we want, and you said the word, you know, one of the things that in dealing with so many people, um, Jake, that, that I can say that I, I, I have a strong suspicion. I don't know you guys extremely well, but when I hear words more than once, you know, that, that to me is a core element that runs a person. And I can tell you, uh, Jake, use the word control three times. That tells me everything I need to know. He about hates Jake. being told what to do by his <laughs> He hates yeah, driving like his, car with his drug <laughs> reps. He hates being told what to do, bro. Exactly. He hates the big businesses, bro. That's what he hates. Yeah, I just well, want to drive, man. Just let me drive the car and I'll be fine, all right? Right. Even if it's going in the wrong direction, bro. Let me drive. It doesn't matter. Me and we'll turn it around Austin. at some point, all right? I, I, got you. Go right. I, hope, I hope everyone is getting the understanding of our mentality which is the most important thing here Mm -hmm. that number one, rich is not just good. It's fantastic. And if you're not sure you should try it. Okay. (laughs) Rich being rich is amazingly great from both. um, Cause you know what, when you, uh, here's everybody, here's a question for you. We've all been involved in real estate a little bit. When, when, uh, when you put out a bunch of offers or, you know, you're trying to sell some whatever and it doesn't work. How do you feel? Well, still feel, you know, if they're enlightened, they go, oh, okay, well, whatever. They don't feel great. They don't feel successful. They don't feel great. They don't feel good. When a deal comes through, how do you feel? You good. Pop, bro. I'm going to say this right now. Success feels great. Am I wrong about that? No, I love it. Success <laughs> feels great. Yeah. I'm not saying it makes you happy. It feels good. It feel, when you feel successful, it's a great feeling about your life and about yourself and about security and about being able to help it. When you, success feels really good. Like for some people, going to a party and having a few drinks and having a lot of fun feels good. So that's what they do. I'm telling you, success feels great. You have one success, it feels great. You have 10 successes, it feels great. You, you're highly successful financially, it feels good. So why not have that part of it in your life? It doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make you a worse person. Out of the, out of the limbs of life, your hands, your fingers, your toes, your legs, your head, your arms, there's many limbs to life. But if your right, one of your, right, your right arm is not working, it is a struggle. and Your life will turn to crap because, just because your right arm isn't working. Financial success is very important on a fiscal level, and on a psychic level, understand? Yep. So I'm a huge believer in helping people understand it's good to be rich, want to be rich, because it helps your lifestyle, it helps your kids, it helps your contribution to other people and other, other organizations. You can't, listen, you think you're gonna help a lot of people being broke? What's, come on, think about it for a second. Oh, I'm a good person. I don't, I don't care about money. And then something happens where there's an earthquake in Thailand or something, and, and, or, or in Nepal, we, just, we, we were in Nepal. The, uh, this is a true story. We were in Nepal. Uh, we're, we took a helicopter to the base camp of Everest. I wasn't climbing, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, our, our guide, who was with us, Hawaii, was a beautiful human being, just barely earned a living. Good for Nepal, but literally just enough to live on and feed his family, which was great. Couldn't be a more sweet person. Not going to tell you all the whole story, but just unbelievable. And the Nepal, literally three months later, the Nepal earthquake happens. He, he's, I could see online that he was trying to raise some money for something. I actually uh, got a hold of him and I said, what's going on? 
And basically he said that he comes from the village up in the mountains where the worst mudslides were and where literally hundreds of people died and the smell and it was just, it was just horrendous. And he says, it's been four days. The Red Cross is doing their best, but they're not up there. They're, they're still, excuse my word, dicking around with all the political crap they have to go through, the right channels, the right this and the right that. And he says, my family and friends are dying in front of me. And I've got a truck and I've got friends with trucks. And we could go down right now if we had any money down to this city and buy tarps and buy shovels and buy equipment, nothing, and maybe buy some water and just turn around and bring it home. And I said, what's it take? He said, if you have a thousand dollars, I said, how, how about a hundred thousand dollars? Boom. I got all my friends. That thing was handled without any freaking red cross. They came in later and did a great job. But listen, if you're broke. What the hell could you do? You can be, Oh, I feel so sorry for them. Okay. Listen, you want some control. It's a good thing to be rich. Now, money does, I don't believe money runs me at all. He'll go, money corrupts people. Really? Money is really just, you know, it, it's really a representative of, of, of value. That's all it is. Money corrupts people? So you mean, it, it, so let me ask you, this is what I ask in my seminars. All right, money corrupts people. So you mean you, you're a good person and when you have a lot of money, you'll become a bad person. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're saying? I mean, think about this. So, uh, let me, okay, what number is that going to be? So your accountant calls you up and say, remember, you're a good person, calls you up and says, oh, I have some good news for you. You are now a millionaire. You go, oh, no, I don't want to be a millionaire. Now I'm a bad person. What? That's ridiculous. It's insane. Who would think of that? So if it's not a million, what is it? When, what number, everybody, will it take for you to become, go from a good person to a bad number, to a bad person? What's the number? Oh, 10 million. When you get 10 million, you become a bad person all of a sudden? Is that the level? No, the whole thing is an insane discussion. It makes no sense. It's complete BS propagated by broke and poor people to keep you broke. Do you know how the whole broke thing happened? How the whole it's pious to be poor, it's good to be poor thing happened? It all started with the kings, the kings and the monarchs. They were the only rich people, okay? And then what would happen if other people became rich? They would lose their power. So they propagated this ridiculous notion that being poor is good. Being poor, you have other things. You have spirit. You have pious. You have intelligence. It's BS. It's crap. You can be, this is what we teach. And I don't mean to get off on a tangent here, but let me just put this mentality out for you. Very simple. This is what we teach. This is our MO and our tagline in our whole company is that you can be kind, generous, loving, balanced, spiritual, and really freaking rich. I've been sitting on the edge of my seat because I want to jump in so bad, but you're on an awesome roll right there. And the thing that drives me nuts is they say money is the root of all evil. Money is a vehicle of trade. You are trading the best that you have to offer to the marketplace, and that's what you're getting paid for. So you're bringing value to the market. If you can bring tremendous value, props to you, you're going to make more money, okay? This is, this is the value you're bringing and what you're receiving, okay? Mm -hmm. This is not the root of all evil. You should be proud that you're bringing so much value that you're, you're receiving you know, the money tenfold back. That's, let, that's me, the thing. let me just plus what you just said, because this is really important. Everybody, everyone needs to listen to this. I have a, new, uh, a, a few new uh, um, projects coming up. But one of them we just did is, is called how to make a lot of money and help a lot of people. So what, what Jake just said is, yeah, props to you by delivering that value. You know what, okay, what is the value that you're delivering? Whatever you're doing, value is, a, is really what that is, is I'm going to say it in another way, solving problems for people. Big problems or little problems? Solving problems for people. That's, that's what they're going to pay you for. That's what's called delivering value. Now, here's a question for you. Do you want to help people? Do you want to solve problems for people? The more people you help solve that problem, the more you get paid. It's as simple as that. So those two things go hand in hand. They are in exact equality. 
you solve problems, you help people, and you get paid for that. You help more people, you get paid more for that. So and I always say this, if you want to get rich, don't focus on money. Money is a result. We already said that. Wealth is a result. Focus on helping people. The more people you help, the more you deliver that value, the more people you help with that value, the more money you make. It's as simple as that. You want to be a good person? Start helping some people. The result, you get rich at the same time. And for all the multifamily guys that are listening right now, guys, real estate is about solving problems. The bigger multifamily deals that you can get into, the more problems you can solve, the more money you're going to make, the more doors you're going to accumulate. I mean, it's- And the more tenants you're going to serve, obviously. The more tenants you're going to serve, the richer you're going to get. That's what it comes down to, so. We, uh, I think- I think we're going kind of long here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to a few more. And we're going to wrap this up. Everybody is, loves the books, right? Everyone wants to know, especially if you're from a guy like yourself, what, what's a, a one or two book recommendations that you got for the listeners? Well, my book recommendations aren't in the area of business or money or anything. For no, that, but I, it all, it's all up here, right? It's yeah, all up here. So, I mean, that, I think you're going to maybe a joke with this one. But go, my, go my, mine is a more of a, a little more of a spiritual tone and, you know, in the, air, in the arenas of how do you be, not, I, I think becoming successful and financially free and rich is, is if, you, if you listen to people like us and you do what we ask you to do and you, you know, get out of your own way, I think it's a give. I think you can, I think you can do it. The question is, can you do it and, and not lose yourself and not lose your, uh, and, and not freak out and, and, and be upset all the time and, and not be angry and, you know, l- literally do it with, with a sense of joy and a sense of, 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 of centeredness and, and a sense of stability, right? Of being happy. So it's about being happy for me. So, you know, I, I have a favorite teacher. She's my guru and her name is Sherry Huber. She wrote a book called The Key, The Key, K-E-Y. And it's a small little book. It's handwritten and it's a lot of kind of, I, I guess you'd call it, um, Buddhist type philosophies, although I'm not a Buddhist and, and I just, I just think that it allows people to stay calm and centered. We teach a program very similar to that. It's basically about how to be calm and centered in spite of anything. And when you're really pushing the envelope on business, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of balls coming at you. And so if you can learn to not only be a good ball hitter, but to stay calm and centered while you're at the plate, I think it's a pretty good combination. That's what I got Gino for. (laughs) (laughs) What project are you excited about right now? Um, a few things that we're doing here, but, um, and again, everything I come from, just so you know, because my son, uh, Jesse is pretty well running our online business. And, you know, I, when I deal with all of our team on the online, cause they're more novice than the seminar business I've been in for like almost 30 years. So, but in this is, I always say, you know, for everything that they're doing and going, what is the next thing that our students need? What's their next step? You know, what level are they at? What would help them the most? It's not, it's not like, here's what we have. This is what we should offer. It's like, what do they need? Let's go create that the best of our abilities to help them. And so, you know, people are constantly asking me, you know, how did you do it? And I'm, I'm kind of just starting out in this arena. I'm not a multi, 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 multi millionaire where, you know, you're already sitting on the top and you're looking down at everything. I'm, I'm just still, I'm still climbing Mount Everest. You know, what do I need to do? And there, so I put together a, kind of a, I guess, you know, a book, an ebook basically. And, um, you know, it's all about doing what people really want. They, they want to earn a lot of money and they want to earn it quickly and they want to earn it intelligently. And so basically this is, uh, this is a ebook called speed wealth, <laughs> uh, speed wealth. It's exactly what it says. Um, and it is, how do you uh, earn a lot of money and do it fairly quickly? And it has a lot to do with some of the things I've been talking about. Certainly mindset is, po- is, is a part of it, but it's only one of the seven steps. The vehicle is a part of it, but it's one of the seven steps. Systemization is part of it. So there is a seven step. It's actually the stuff that, that maybe go from broke to, to wealthy. And it comes in ex- seven exact steps. And these steps, you, number one, you have to do all seven steps. If you don't do all seven steps, it won't work and you won't get rich. Simple as that. I don't care what business you're in. Number two, you have to do the seven steps in order. If you do six before four, it's over. It won't work. So there's seven steps to creating wealth and, you know, doing it in a much more 
uh, high speed manner, no matter what business you're in. If you want to take 40 years to create your wealth, don't read this. This isn't for you. Read something. You get rich slow. I don't care what you read. It's not this. This is for people who legitimately would like to create wealth, but they would rather do it much sooner than later. And you must do this. Seven steps, you must do them in order. It's called speed wealth. And um, so we've created that for people. And, you know, I, I, again, it's for me, it's a work of, I'm semi-retired now, so it's, it's a work of, I wouldn't say giving back, because I don't think I took anything from anybody. I, I don't think, are you going to give back? What did I take to give back? I, I've always served and served with the reward that's always come, you know, for good service. So, you know, I, I think another way of serving people is to just really very specifically in a very short way. It's not this big, long, drawn out thing that's going to take you nine years to read. You can literally read it in one sitting. Literally, that's why we created it. So it's one sitting. You learn how to create wealth speedily, quickly, and in any business you choose. So um, that one is, uh, is, is kind of a, something we put together that I think is really, really, really imperative for everyone who wants to be successful. And I think it's so imperative. I've always done well by being able to give things away. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to uh, give it to all your audience. Thank you. That's awesome. Gina, we'll definitely get that in the show notes. Yep. Um, I just want, want to, to say where, how to get the free copy. Or are you going to handle that? No, let them know where to get it. We're going to put it in the show notes too. Tell us where, where they can get it. So they, they, yeah. if they want to just jump on right now and get it. But yeah, we'll just, also go to, just go to download it at the uh, harveckeronline.com forward slash free book. So Harv Ecker, H-A-R-V-E-K-E-R, online.com and then forward slash free book. And maybe you guys can put that up somewhere or whatever. So, yeah. There's going to be a link in the show notes for sure. And that's how they can get the speed wealth there. I'm going to, I'm going to definitely check that out just because, you know, I, uh, I read the millionaire mind, um, secrets of the millionaire mind, but I just, man, you're just a fun guy to speak to. This has just been a good, good time. Of, you know, I've really enjoyed this. Um, Gino, do you have any, anything else for Harv? Um, he's like one of my, I guess, heroes. I don't know. It, it was just to me, it's been an amazing hour and a half for me. I, I'm, I'm honored that he took time out of his day being semi-retired, getting off a two hour call to spend time with us and to share his knowledge. And that's I don't, make it happen though. That's what he said. That's whatever it takes. You know, yeah, just, but I mean, I don't feel like I'm getting punched in the gut anymore because I know where he's coming from and I know his message is true. And I know if you want to become rich, you got to listen to him. It's that simple. Start out with Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, go out and buy CDs, download his book, and listen to it. And if you want to become rich, you follow the steps. It's that simple. It really is that simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. No, there but you go. the choice is yours, right? It's a choice. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Well, I appreciate it, Harv. Thanks for stopping by today. And, um, you know, best of luck to you. Thanks. And thank you to you guys. You guys are doing great work. I love the area, the space that you're in, um, both mentally and vehicle wise and the knowledge you provide for people. Um, I know for myself, I'm not a big, uh, I don't, I've never had the time and inclination to really learn the whole multifamily real estate element myself. But I'm such a believer in it that I would probably say that about, oh, maybe about 40% of my wealth is in multifamily housing. Right. And it is doing it with partners who know what they're doing <laughs> and have proven track records. And um, I don't try to do any of those pieces myself. In fact, that was just offered to buy out one of them. I said, no, no, I don't want to buy you out. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Just keep sending me my checks, right? <laughs> I don't want more work, right? <laughs> We should buy them out. We'll make more money. I don't care. I like my hot tub. <laughs> I like my freedom. I enjoy it. Right? Let them make money. We'll make money. It's good. So That's right. Everybody who's listening, I think multifamily is a great thing um, because you are helping more people all at the same time. And it gives you a lot of leverage. And it's a, a, a big need for people. Remember the people that are, are solving a problem, the people that you are are, are putting into your units and buying units for you to do. I hope, and I, and I hope I'm not saying anything against you guys. I doubt it based on what I'm hearing about you. Everyone, I have a message for you. The people who are renting from you, the people who are, you're buying it and they guess they're renting from them or a property manager or whatever, do right by them. These are people that if they could afford their own house, they would, they would have it, but they can't. And that's why they need you. And that's why they have the, that's why they're in some kind of a duplex or apartment or whatever. They need it. They don't, they don't have millions of dollars. Do right by them. I remember the, one of the first ones that I got involved in where I got involved pretty heavily is in Arizona. And I went to visit it because the, the guys who's managing it said, 
you got to come check this roof out. It's going to be uh, $600,000 to fix the roof. I don't know if you want to put this in, blah, 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 blah. And I went there, you know, I, n I never, hardly ever go. I went there and I saw, and I never really, you know, because I'm, I'm an investor, I never really saw the people before. So I go there and I see the roof is freaking dripping in people's houses, in, in, their, in their apartments. And they got like, they got the water bins and, and they're not even complaining. There's a lot of Hispanic people. They're in Arizona. They're, not, they're just happy to be there and they've got it inexpensive. They're not even complaining. And I go, well, damn right, we're going to fix, fix the roof. And then I see some lady who's on one of the walkways that's all cracked and everything. And she's in a, uh, taking her kid in a stroller and she's in flip flops and her feet are like literally two inches of water on this um, uh, un unstable uh, rock and the kids like this in a stroller and I'm going this I, I wouldn't send my worst enemy on this path why isn't this fixed well it won't positive cash flow going on. and this and I'm going you guys I'm either going to fire you right now or you need to get your head straight it's not about money right now mm -hmm. let's get this act together let's would you live in this they go well, no again why would you make somebody else live in this it's ridiculous well it's not going to cash flow and then you're gonna that's later later okay do the right thing help people give them the right value all right fast forward four years from there at that point in time it was 64 percent occupancy I now have 98%. I've never gone down since two years after that from to less than 96% occupancy. We almost always have a waiting list. Every those people, they love the place. They love us. They as soon as there's a vacancy, they call their friends and they have a lot of friends and their family. You've got to come here. Why? Because they we throw parties for them. It's Christmas. We make it a big celebration for them. You know. You do the right thing for people. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, if you bless other people, you will be blessed. I, I can't uh, agree with you more. You, right on the front of our website, it says, we believe that renting is personal and our residents are our number one priority because we found in like the B space, the B and C apartment space that we operate in, a lot of these folks have been neglected. So they come to our apartments, we, you know, we take care of them. And it's just something that, you know, some of these other folks, they've been in other places where they've rented before and they haven't got that kind of service. So it's all about the, uh, the Chick-fil-A, you know, type service that we're looking for. <laughs> I he always laughs at me, but that's what we're shooting for. I mean, it's, listen, they have a great training program. I know it's, it's fast food or whatever, but you know, that, that's where we're going. So. Look, I think we should all leave, we should leave it with this simple, simple two words. Okay. If you want to be successful, if you want to be rich, follow the golden rule. Just follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to you. If you follow that, you will not only be rich, you will be happy, you'll be a good person. Simple as that. Thanks, Wait, Harv. Harv, thanks for your time. Hi, guys. We trust that you enjoy the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast. Visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. See you next time when Jake and Gino share more of their investing secrets with you.